Hey guys, welcome to the 14. I'm Nick Cole, and today we're breaking down all of the week seven SEC football games from a betting perspective. Today, we're talking about the Auburn Tigers visiting the Arkansas Razorbacks on a Saturday afternoon clash in Fayetteville. This game's going to have a noon Eastern kickoff, which is 11 a.m. local time there in, in Fayetteville at Razorback Stadium. This game's going to be televised on CBS. The, uh, from a betting perspective, this game opened with Arkansas as a four-point favorite, and it's moved slightly as the week's gone along. As a recording of this video, the Hogs were a four-and-a-half-point favorite. And the over-under on this game is where, where there's been a little bit more significant movement. It opened at 50-and-a-half, and as of our recording of this video, it's up to 54. I'll bring in our betting analyst, Christopher Smith. Christopher, what, what do you make of this SEC West matchup? Yeah, I mean, thankfully, the line indicates that we're going to have a really competitive game here. I think any SEC West game this year is outstanding. I mean, uh, Mississippi State may be, quote-unquote, the worst team in the West, and we just saw them beat a and and should have beaten LSU the last time they played. So I think very interesting game. But why don't you uh, break down the, the weather injuries and give us Nick's news and notes. Sure. So we'll start with the weather uh, in Fayetteville. We're going to have uh, temperatures in the low to mid sixties for this game. Again, starting at 11 a.m. local time there. So it, it'll go up as the game goes along there as we get into the afternoon. And then uh, from a wind standpoint, we're going to have nine to 10 miles an hour, uh, which is right on the cusp of being something that could impact the game. Uh, Christopher typically says it's 10 mile an hour or, or more is something you should start looking at. Uh, so check that forecast as the, as the hours before the kickoff come along. Um, on the injury side of things, let's start with Auburn. Uh, they've got a couple of defensive players we need to monitor. Pass rusher T.D. Moultroy and uh, linebacker Owen Popo are both questionable for this game, and, and that's a really big deal, uh, both of those guys being in or out against this Arkansas rushing offense. Uh, Harson said on Wednesday that hopefully they'll get Popo back this weekend when the team travels. But, again, that's something I would check on Saturday to see if he made the trip with the team and if he's expected to be in the lineup. Uh, on the Arkansas side of things, uh, the right tackle Dalton Wagner is out with a finger injury, and so that, that could have a little bit of an impact on that um, offensive line up front for the Hawks. News and notes-wise, uh, let's start with Arkansas and just talk about where they're at right now in this season. They, they opened at 4-0, moved all the way up to number eight in the country, and then they went to Georgia, got shut out, and then they went to Ole Miss and lost 52-51 to in a very exciting game where they went for two at the very end of the game to try to win without going to overtime. That didn't break their way. Now they're four and two. They're still hanging in the top 25, but you got to wonder, okay, is some of that magic gone? Is, is the confidence hurt a little bit for this team after what felt like they could do no wrong in September? They gave up 37 to Georgia, who really called off the dogs late in that game, and then gave up 52 to Ole Miss, who's a good, a good offense. But at some point, is this actually a defensive issue that Barry Odom needs to get fixed for this team? And then on the Auburn side of things, they're a hard team to define right now. If you look back at how this team has performed over the last month, we'll go to the Penn State game where they went to Happy Valley, and that game came down to the very final minutes, and they lost in a one-possession game, and you, your confidence kind of grew on them. Now, Penn State, as we found out, was a top-five type of team at that point. And you say, okay, well, maybe Brian Harson's got something going here. And they came back home and needed an extremely fortunate um, situation where they were down to their very last play through a, a sort of a miracle uh, touchdown pass to beat Georgia State at home. And so your confidence waned and said, whoa, wait a minute, this team maybe isn't as good as we thought. Then Bo Nix rises from the ashes to lead them to a comeback win against LSU and Death Valley the next week. And you say, okay, I back on the Auburn train, confidence grows again. And then they're at home against Georgia last week and they got dominated pretty much from beginning to end uh, and only had 46 yards rushing on 29 carries against that Georgia defense. And you're like, okay, I'm not so sure this team is actually any good anymore. I can't figure them out. I don't know if you figured them out. Uh, but what I do know about this series going into this game is Auburn's won five games in a row uh, against the Hogs. But anybody who watched the Hogs and Auburn last year knows that um, that game maybe probably should have gone to the Hogs. The, the, the Tigers got a little bit of help from the Zebras late in that game to secure a 30-28 to 28 win. And Sam Pittman's team, even in year one, looked ready to compete physically against an Auburn program that is known for having – plenty of size and speed. Christopher, what do you make of all of this as, as we try to forecast this game from a betting perspective? Yeah, you mentioned the Arkansas defense, and I feel like the narrative is that they're tough, they're physical, they fly to the ball. But somewhat quietly, they haven't been very good against the run. 
The big question with Auburn's running game right now to me is how are they going to divide out the carries? Because I'm not sure if you heard this, Nick, or, uh, or everyone else out there, but there was a reporter who asked uh, Brian Harson last week, is Tank Bigsby hurt? Because he has not been running the ball very well the last three games. His average is way down. And Drakwes Hunter is performing much, much better as a ball carrier. And the thing is that if you look at the pro football, football focus grades, Hunter is the worst in pass pro on the team. He's averaging more than two yards less per, per reception than either of the other two running backs. So he's also a true freshman. So to me, what that tells me is Auburn does not trust Hunter as much in passing situations as they do the other backs. And probably to an extent when he's in the game, uh, opposing defenses have some idea that Auburn's probably going to run the ball more likely than they are when the other two backs are in the game. So to me, with Arkansas struggling against the run and Hunter clearly being your best runner at this point, that leaves Auburn with two things. Either you give Hunter more carries and say, uh, we don't care if this is a tell or we don't care if this is sort of maybe a downgrade in our passing game. He's our best runner right now. We're going to feed him the ball. Or Bigsby needs to either get healthy if he hasn't been healthy or, or he needs to start performing like he has through, you know, one and a quarter seasons at Auburn. So uh, I want to see what happens there because to me, Auburn has to run the ball against Arkansas, absolutely has to do it. They're not going to beat Arkansas through the air. And they need, they need uh, one of those two things to happen or else they're not going to be able to do that on the ground either. Now, Arkansas is going to challenge your manhood as a defense. They run the ball nearly 70% of the time. And also, they're 10th in rushing yards per game and 22nd in yards per carry. And their top five are all averaging between 5.3 and 6.5 per carry. So it's not like you can just stop one guy, you stop the starting running back. Even Jefferson, he's got five touchdowns himself at quarterback, and he's a big guy. So you know, uh, there is a way to stop the Arkansas run, and that's to have your defensive line and, to a lesser extent, your linebackers just physically dominate Arkansas. Uh, you mentioned the right tackle is out. Uh, Georgia physically dominated Arkansas up front in the trenches, and Arkansas didn't score a point. Then they scored 51 the next week. And so, really, you got you to gotta be uh, more physical and you got to be more gritty in the trench than Arkansas and more than their offensive line. And if you're able to just out physical, then bully the bullies, then Arkansas's offense is sort of in trouble. Um, they do. They're not very, they're not nearly as good. Arkansas is not nearly as good at protecting uh, in the passing game. And Jefferson's been better than I expected as a thrower. And, but he's not going to win the game for you. If you have to rely on him, um, you do have Traylon Burks, who I think is the, now that uh, Boutte is out at LSU, Burks, to me, is the clear-cut best receiver in the SEC. So he can definitely get behind your defense. And also with Jefferson, if you rush him, you got to worry about him taking off and running the ball. But if you're Auburn, uh, you you're like your chances better um, at trying to like prevent um, you know wide receiver one from getting behind your defense than you do if Arkansas can just sit back and run 70% plus of the time and follow the game plan they want to do. So uh, I think the running game on both sides of the ball is the key to figuring out who's going to win, who's going to cover in this game. But Nick, how are you betting this one? So I actually like the Hogs to get right at home this week. Uh, the friendly confines, the, some confidence built back up in that offense after being shut out at Georgia, the 51 points. I think, that, I think they're probably feeling a little bit better where they're at. And like you said, I think Traylon Burks it, it may be the key to this game from a from a passing game perspective for them. So I, I like the Hogs, uh, minus four and a half. And then, honestly, I, I don't have a strong lean on the total in this game. Uh, for the purposes of our picks, which you may want to fade me on this since my picks have been so bad the last couple of weeks, uh, I, I like the over of 54 on this. Like I said, I, I think the Arkansas offense gets right in this game. So I think part of that is, is scoring some points. And, and, and I don't know that the Arkansas defense is good enough to keep Auburn from scoring right along with them. So give me over 54. What are you thinking? I'm going to go against you here and do the exact opposite. My Probably favorite, smart move. It, it may be. We'll see. Uh, my favorite bet in this game is definitely under 54. I think that 
you know, it's it's dangerous with Arkansas just because of Burks. Anytime that he's in the game, he can hit 80 plus yard touchdown pass, and that can really mess up your under. But I think that Auburn is not going to blow up Arkansas like like Georgia did uh, in terms of the Georgia defensive front. But I think that they're a tougher matchup than Arkansas has had outside of Georgia in terms of physically up front. And Auburn's been surprisingly good along their rebuilt defensive line against the run. Not as good at rushing the passer. But if they get their permanent team captain back at linebacker this weekend especially, um, Auburn's offense is definitely not great right now. I mean, there's something going on with Bigsby. They can't throw. Um, Hunter is the best thing they have going for them. So if they feed him, the, whether or not they feed him the ball more, both teams are going to be running the ball a lot. So the clock's going to be moving. I think both defenses have an edge in this game. I do like Auburn plus four and a half and what I, what I expect to be a slightly lower scoring game than what's being projected with the total. And also, um, I have a feeling that uh, Auburn is going to figure something out with, with Biggs to be in Hunter and that split heading into this game. So give me Auburn plus four and a half and under 54 for Nicole. I'm Christopher Smith for the 14 and we'll talk to you next week.